Hi, everybody. We're back with another webinar today on creative writing. We did a couple of these last week and we had a lot of fun. So we are going to be doing a more in-depth webinar today. Uh, last week, we talked about a lot of different pieces of creative writing and we kind of went through it pretty quickly. And we had some interest in taking a few of those pieces and going deeper and talking more about how they work. So today, our webinar is about the plot of great stories and how to make a really fun journey in your story. And we're gonna talk about some of the pieces of that. And we'll have time because we're not gonna talk about really other areas very much. Uh, we'll have time for more questions and we'll have time for you to think of examples and come up with your own examples if you'd like to. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see who we have here today. It's like, oh, we have a lot of people here today. Probably a lot of writers are here today and a lot of people who love stories. So I see Annika, Anne, Annadel, Austin, Avery, it's alphabetical at the beginning, Beckham, Charlene, Fallon, Holly, Isaiah, Isis, James, uh, Jessica. Let's see, who else is here? Uh, Laurel, Liza. Logan, Lorna, Maya, Milo, Morgan, <laughs> Nate, Nya, uh, Olivia, Owen, Sasha, Shanna, and Vanessa. And if I missed your name, it looks like more people are still popping in. So hi to everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are here today. So as we talk about, uh, as we talk about stories today, uh, this information is going to be uh, um, suggestions. One of the things that's really important to remember with writing and especially creative writing is that there are lots of suggestions and there are very few uh, firm rules that you have to follow. For every suggestion or good idea or the way that a lot of people tend to do something that we're gonna talk about, you could probably think of just as many examples of stories that don't follow that suggestion or that rule. And that's totally okay. Um, the ideas that we're going to talk about today have worked for a lot of people and you can use them to the extent that it helps you write your story. Uh, if you don't want to follow one of these rules, that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, if we're going over an example and you can think of, wait a second, I read this other story or I watched this other movie and they don't do that. Yeah, there's going to be lots of examples like that. So uh, take this information to the amount that it helps you write and uh, don't worry about something if it feels like it's not something that you wanna use, okay? All right, so uh, the main thing that we're going to talk about when we talk about the plot of stories is an idea today called the hero's journey. And this is one idea that some writers and some people who study stories have found uh, it's sort of like a um, a method of telling stories that has happened many, many times uh, since the dawn of history. Uh, people like scientists and, uh, well, historians and people that like to study the way stories are told uh, when researching and reading and observing stories throughout history, they found that there were some common things that tended to happen in a lot of stories. The sort of beginning, middle, and end of lots of stories uh, seem to kind of follow a similar path. So they came up with a way to describe that. And what they called that was the hero's journey. Because most stories, first of all, have a hero. And that doesn't always mean like a superhero. Uh, that just means that that person is the main person of your story, the story that you are reading or that you're writing. Um, if the story is just about a kid going to a new school and trying to figure out how to, you know, be part of that school and make friends in a new town, that kid is the hero of that story. They don't have to have powers or special abilities to be the hero. It just means they're the main character. And journey means the path that they're going to go on through the story. A person could, uh, stay in one place or they could stay near where they started out in a story and still go on a journey because that journey could be 
Maybe there's an emotional journey that they go on. Maybe they start out with some problems and by the end of the story, they've managed to fix a lot of those problems. You could say that that was a journey from beginning to end. But in lots and lots of stories, there actually is a journey. Um, a character will start in one place and they go on an adventure and they go through a long winding path and they end up somewhere else. So whether it's a literal, actual journey through, uh, through a world or through space or across the ocean, or if it's more of a personal journey of getting from one state of being to another, it's called the hero's journey. And again, it's just a description of that, that path that they're gonna follow through the course of the story. So, um, I already see a lot of uh, comments jumping up in the Q&A box, as always. Uh, if you guys have any questions or you uh, want to ask something, you can go ahead and type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Um, a lot of people say, hi, hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello. I see a lot of our students that are, have been to our previous writing seminar, so I'm happy that you guys are back. Um, one person says, I am trying to write a book, but I can't figure out what to begin with. Do you have any suggestions? Um, yeah, let's start off with that. So the beginning of the hero's journey is called, actually here's a, I found this, this uh, picture online and I think it's a pretty useful, uh, it's kind of a, uh, it shows in a pie chart in a way, the whole journey that a person uh, can go on through a story. It starts over here you'll see this picture over here. It says introduction to protagonist's world. And it goes in a big circle. If you follow my cursor, if you follow that, that little white arrow that you see moving, it kind of starts here and it goes around in a big circle and it ends up back here again. Now on the outside, you'll see the words act one, act two, and act three. Those words, act one, act two, and act three, that comes from plays, plays and musicals up on stage. Um, they, the acts are like the big chunks or sections of the story. Usually in, in theater, in plays that you watch on a stage, uh, the story will be broken up into big chunks. And sometimes there'll be a break in between those chunks. And each one of those bigger chunks of the story would be called an act. Uh, Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, a uh, famous uh, um, playwright, a person who writes plays from England, his plays had five acts. There was always five big sections or chunks. Uh, later on, in more modern plays, there's often three or even just two acts. So it might be act one, act two, and act three, or just act one and act two. And maybe there'd be a break in between. So this describing word, started getting applied to movies and uh, other stories too. And it would basically mean act one is the chunk of the story where you're sort of setting things up and getting things started. Act two is the big middle chunk where a lot of the really exciting stuff happens in a story. And act three is your ending. It's where things kind of, uh, everything gets uh, finished off and fixed up or uh, resolved and the story ends off. So act one, act two, act three. The important parts of act one, the first part is introduction to protagonist's world or introduction to the hero's world. Protagonist, that word just means the main character of your story. So for our, our viewer who is asking, how do I start off my story? Well, in most stories, it's important to start off by uh, introducing the reader to what is happening. Like what is the normal uh, situation before anything starts off? Um, I'm going to show lots of examples from movies for our webinar today, just because um, hopefully a lot of us will have watched these movies and they're visual. It'll be easy to <laughs> remember and hopefully see the point that we're talking about. Uh, but here we go. So if you've seen Star Wars, uh, it begins, 
Luke's story, the main character, Luke, his uh, beginning is on this desert world called Tatooine. And he's kind of a farmer. He uh, kind of has a bit of a boring life. Um, he's not really happy with how things are. But in the movie, after a few other things happen where they kind of show you some stuff going on in space, the movie switches to showing you Luke's ordinary world. It, he's going to be the main character that we're going to follow through the movie. And they have to start the story off by kind of showing you how are things going in his life before anything exciting happens. We have to see that how things are at the beginning so that when things change, uh, it's actually exciting. You as a viewer or you as a reader have to kind of know the way stuff was before so that when they change, there's that feeling of excitement for you too. So my suggestion to you, uh, the viewer who's asking how to start your story, is to try to figure out for your character, what is the ordinary world? And you're gonna want some things that your main character is probably not happy about because if everything is going great in your main character's life, then there isn't probably a lot of reason to go on an adventure or have things change. Another one that a lot of us are familiar with is Harry Potter. Uh, the book takes time to show us how Harry's life is at the beginning and how he's not happy with his life before he goes off on an adventure and gets started. Uh, if Harry was already uh, maybe had a lot of money and tons of friends and a good family and uh, was about to go to a school that he was really excited about going and this letter shows up in the mail saying, uh, you know, you're going to go to wizard school, he might have thought it was a silly joke, thrown it away, and that's the end of the story. But because Harry was not happy with his life and things were not going well, he was very excited and jumped at the chance to go to wizard school. In the same way with Luke Skywalker, when uh, a robot, a droid shows up and there's a message from somebody asking for help, he jumps at the chance to go on the adventure and start off uh, that journey. And that brings us to the next part is that after we've shown what the ordinary world is, for like, is like for the character, there's a call to action. And I took this picture from Harry Potter. Uh, letters show up at Harry's house and say, uh, you, you know, you're a wizard. <laughs> you get to go to wizard school. Uh, here's the stuff you need to buy. Uh, show up in September. And he is super excited about this. Here's his family, his aunt and his uncle and his cousin he doesn't like very much. Uh, that's the world that he was used to. Uh, he wants to get out of that world. And what this term means, the call to action. A call, it's like a communication. It's a message of some sort. It's something that happens and says, uh, here is a journey for you to go on. Here is an adventure that's calling your name. It's basically, it can happen in a lot of different ways in the story, but it's the big change. It's the big thing that says, Things are not normal anymore. Something amazing is about to start. And that take, can take a lot of different uh, uh, forms in a story, um, but it's usually the first big exciting thing that happens in the story that is going to change the world of that character forever. Um, I'm gonna look at the Q&A really quick. I see some more stuff popping up in there. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, one, one viewer says, um, I have not seen Star Wars. That's okay. Um, these examples that we're talking about, I'll try to give you enough information. Even if you haven't seen the movie, we'll try to have enough information that you can understand the example anyway. Uh, but if you have seen these movies, uh, it'll just give you a little bit of extra example of what we're talking about. Um... Yeah, some <laughs> another viewer says I haven't I haven't watched or read Harry Potter. Again, that's okay. We'll we'll talk about the ideas in general, and these examples are just additional information if you have seen them. So okay, great. We're gonna keep on going. So uh, if you if you research the hero's journey on your own, some people that talk about it will uh, describe a lot more steps. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of like a simple version of the hero's journey today. But if you're interested and you want to learn more about it, 
you can find websites or books that talk about it in a lot more detail. And each of the steps we're talking about, they often break down into more steps. Um, but for our purposes today, I don't think that that's very important. We're gonna kind of talk about the main steps. But one little step that I just wanted to mention real quickly is that oftentimes in some stories, uh, after there's a call to action, the main character will at first say no. <laughs> uh, Harry definitely jumped at the chance in Harry Potter. When he was told you're a wizard and you get to go to wizard school, he was super excited and he definitely wanted to do that. But there are other stories where the main character, after they're told things have changed and here's the journey that you get to go on, sometimes a way that you can make the story exciting is by having the main character at first say no. Uh, the next part of the journey that we're going to talk about, uh, the example that I've picked out is based on that. But if you have read the book, The Hobbit, a very famous book, or seen the movies based on it, the story begins with this character, this person that's a hobbit, that's just a type of short creature, kind of like a, a, a dwarf or a gnome. They're kind of shorter than a person. Anyway, uh, he gets an, a, a chance to go on an adventure. And at first, he does not want to go. He is not interested. There's a call to action, and he says no. But if the character stays with no, there's no story. So the next part is where the person here is, is Bilbo is the main character. He is leaving home. He has changed his mind, and he's decided, I am going to go on this adventure. The term for this is usually crossing the threshold. And that word, threshold, it just means it's kind of like your front door. Uh, the word threshold literally means it's that part at the bottom of your doorway. Um, so crossing the threshold means you are stepping out of the house. You are leaving home and you are going on the journey. So Bilbo here, he at first was offered to go on an adventure, to go to a mountain uh, guarded by a dragon. It's supposed to be full of gold. Uh, he was gonna go with a whole um, party of dwarves. There's gonna be a wizard. I mean, to you or I, it sounds really exciting, but to Bilbo at first, he was like, nope, I wanna stay home, not interested. <laughs> he, uh, he rejects the call to action. He says, no. He thinks about it a little bit more. Uh, after everybody else leaves and he changes his mind and here he goes running off after them. He wants to join the party. He doesn't want the, the party to go on without him. He doesn't want everybody else to have the fun. He wants to go check out a mountain full of gold too. So in your story, after you've established the normal world and you have had a call to action, which is the big change, the big opportunity for things to happen, your character has to actually make the decision to say, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave on this journey. For Harry Potter, this is when he actually takes off and he leaves home and he heads off to the wizard school for the first time. For Luke Skywalker, it's when he sets out and he's actually going to try to go on this rescue mission to go rescue a princess. They've made the choice, they've made the decision. It's time to go on the adventure. And it is important, again, this is a suggestion, but it is important to have your character make that choice to some degree. Um, exciting characters, and we'll talk about characters more in our, our next Creative Writing Seminar, but it's, it's important to have them be people that are, even if there's things about themselves they're trying to fix at the beginning, it's not very fun to read about somebody that's just having things happen to them. Uh, we do like to read about characters that are to some degree decisive, that are choosing things, and they are the ones making things happen. Things can happen to your main character, but it's important for them to actually do some things and make some decisions too. Or you can, as a reader or a watcher, feel yourself kind of getting annoyed. Like, this is the main character? Like, they, they're kind of wimpy. They never do anything. Things just happen to them. So, Bilbo here in this story and the main characters in most stories do have to make the decision to go on the adventure. After this point in a lot of stories, uh, the main character gets taught by a mentor of some sort. A mentor is like a teacher. 
This is from the uh, Karate Kid movie. It's the second Karate Kid. Well, it's a reboot of the original one. If you're older like me, you'll remember the first Karate Kid from back in the 80s or whenever. This one had Jaden Smith and it had Jackie Chan, but it's a very similar story. Um, Jaden Smith wants to become, you know, somebody that knows karate. Uh, Jackie Chan is going to teach him. There's usually a part of the story where the main character, they have to learn. Now that they've started on this adventure, they have to start learning things. They have to kind of get new abilities. They have to start figuring out how to be the kind of person that goes on an adventure. Um, Harry Potter has various mentors. Uh, Hagrid comes to mind. Um, Dumbledore is another mentor. So if you've read Harry Potter, you'll know some of those characters. Luke Skywalker has Obi-Wan Kenobi, the person who starts teaching him about how to be a Jedi. Um, most stories, there has to be, there's usually somebody who's going to teach things to the main character. Uh, most good stories, they have the, the main character starts out at one level of ability or intelligence or one level of skills. And throughout a good story, they're going to gain and add skills and intelligence and abilities, or they're going to gain more courage. They're going to gain more problem solving. There will be setbacks along the way, but this person in this movie, uh, Karate Kid, he's learning literally how to fight, how to have karate skills, but also how to have self-respect. Um, he learns in a lot of ways. And Jackie Chan is the person who's going to teach him. Um, so let's see, I think a few people have examples here. Uh, what movie is number three from? That's from the Hobbit movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, some people say that they're not familiar with this one. This movie is a little bit old at this point, but uh, it, it was fun enough. If you want to watch, you know, it's a good family movie. <laughs> you can probably go find it on a streaming service by this point. Okay, good. So the next step in the hero's journey is there are first challenges. Uh, this comes from Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, hopefully a lot of you have already seen these movies, so hopefully I'm not spoiling anything. But after our main character uh, gains some Spider-Man-like abilities, uh, he, Miles Morales has to set out and actually start going on his adventure. And he encounters villains like this version of Dr. Octopus. He uh, encounters setbacks and things are going to happen that at first, you know, he's a little bit excited that he has spider powers, but then he actually starts fighting bad guys and uh, having to use his new spider abilities. And he's basically getting challenged. Uh, just before this in the movie, he met a mentor another version of Spider-Man that isn't super excited about teaching him, but that version of Spider-Man is teaching him things. And now he has to start using his spider powers. He has to start figuring them out and learning how to be a spider person. So this section of your story can be kind of a longer section and the challenges, uh, the villains that the person encounters, this can take up a good section of the middle of your story. Um, having, having bad things happen to the character or setbacks, figuring out how to overcome them. This can be the real meat of the story. It's the very, it's the real satisfying part of the story where you get to see them do lots of exciting things. Um, they might, uh, mess up and then they have to get more, uh, training from their mentor and overcome it. Uh, they might be defeated temporarily, and then they uh, learn how to beat the bad guy. And you know, th this is kind of the, the middle section of a lot of stories. So lots of, you guys are coming up with lots of good examples of these two. Um, let me read some of these examples that people are putting in here. Yes, one of our viewers says that in Percy Jackson, he has a mentor. Yeah, in those books and in the, I think in the movies too. I wasn't a big fan of the movies. But yeah, in the books, 
he has uh, mentors at Camp Half-Blood and he, I think, meets other mentors along the way occasionally. But Percy definitely has people that are teaching him about being a demigod and how to, you know, use his abilities. Uh, <laughs> somebody's asking, which version of Spider-Man is this? This, is, this picture is from Into the Spider-Verse, the animated Spider-Man movie. <laughs> uh, one person mentions they're talking about in the Rocky movies. Those are really, really old movies, most of them. Uh, he, he, this person is training to be a boxer and he, uh, he punches meat. Uh, one of the viewers wanted to bring up that example. That's a great example of training. Okay, the next part of the journey is temptation. And this means that usually there will be something in the story that might make the main character, it might tempt them to kind of leave the journey that they're on. Uh, this is a picture of Thor and Jane Foster from one of the Thor movies. If you've seen the Marvel movies, my favorite movies, big Marvel fan right here. Um, in the first Thor movie, uh, you know, Thor's met this woman. He thinks maybe he's starting to have, you know, feelings for her. And he has to decide, am I going to go on and be the hero? Or maybe should I leave my journey and just be with this person who I'm romantically interested in? Lots of stories, they will have this moment, uh, kind of two thirds of the way through the story where the character really has to decide, am I going to go on and continue my journey or am I gonna stop? Uh, in almost every story, the hero figures out or decides to continue on with their journey. Um, I can't think of a lot of examples where the hero gives in to the temptation because, um, I don't know, it just wouldn't be really satisfying. <laughs> I can't imagine what a story would be like where the hero is going off in their adventure and then someone's like, hey, what if you quit? And they're like, okay. <laughs> Um, but we can think of lots of examples where there is an offer for the hero to go, you know, stop or quit or just take the easy path and live an easy life. And usually we really love the stories where the hero says, I'd really love to, but I have to go beat the, the villain or I have to go save the day. It's usually really, it feels good to us as readers and viewers when the hero uh, decides to maybe set aside what they personally want because they're going to save the day or they're going to save the world or, you know, be the hero instead of just doing what they want to do. I'm sure that you can think of lots of examples of that at home too. Uh, more comments jumping in here. <laughs> Yes, one viewer is like, wait, that picture is from Thor the Dark World. You're correct. That's right. <laughs> I can tell you're a Marvel fan too. Um, um, Isis says, in Percy Jackson, that happens too. Yeah. In a lot of stories, um, you know, they're, they're, it, and it comes in a lot of different forms, but there's usually going to be something that comes up that the hero or the main character could decide just to quit and stop and be like, I'm done. I'm gonna go do this other thing. And even the villain sometimes offers the, the good guy. The villain will say, you know, I'm gonna, you know, hey, I'm gonna give you an opportunity here to just stop. And like, you can go off and I'll let you go. And the hero usually has to make the choice and say, no, I'm gonna keep on going. All right, the next section is all is lost or uh, there's other terms for this, but it's usually, um, well, you know, spoiler alert for most, you know, adventures and most movies or books where uh, there's this hero's journey, but we're getting towards the end of the story. We're probably three fourths of the way through the story. Uh, something bad usually happens here. This is usually the point where the main character's mentor uh, might get removed somehow. They lose their teacher, uh, the mentor or somebody important to the main character might die, might get defeated by the villain. Um, 
things through the middle section of your story were moving along well and the hero is feeling really good about their new abilities and then something really bad happens. Uh, in almost every story and in almost every movie, there will be something bad will happen at this point in the story or somebody or something will die. Um, it's important for most stories that a character who's been being taught or who has had a teacher or a mentor in stories, they can't go on being the student forever. It's not satisfying to us as a viewer or a reader to have our main character be sort of a student or sort of like a sidekick to a more powerful uh, figure. So in most stories, that more powerful teacher or mentor in most stories gets killed or has to quit or stop or something so that the main character can become, you know, the, they have to go from being the student to themselves being the, the main person um, now moving forward. They can't lean on anybody anymore. Um, but this is the point where usually, uh, you know, and like in a lot of Marvel movies, <laughs> I love them, but I understand how they work too. There will be a point where it seems like the bad guys may, I mean, the good guys maybe have lost. Uh, it might seem like the main characters are going to die themselves. Things get very emotional. The music of the movie makes it sound like, ah, everything's bad. You know, <laughs> we, you know, the, the world is not going to be saved. But as writers, as creative writers, you can use this tool right here to make a really satisfying story. You have to give one last kind of big failure so that the hero can then rise up and really overcome it. Um, let's see in the Q&A box if you guys have any examples of that or ideas about that. Uh, yeah, uh, one viewer points out, they say, this happens in Percy Jackson, Wings of Fire, and in Harry Potter. You're right. Um, yeah, another viewer asks, is this from Star Wars? Yes, this is from the very first Star Wars movie ever made, uh, Star Wars A New Hope. Uh, this is the first one ever. So uh, hopefully you've all seen this. I won't say exactly what happens, but there's definitely an all is lost moment here. <laughs> if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, something bad happens and the main character, Luke Skywalker, has to decide how he's going to go on and save the day kind of on his own on, at this point to some degree. Um, another viewer says, this happens in Angry Birds 2. That's from Anjali. I haven't seen Angry Birds 2, but I believe you because most stories have this. Things will be going well, and then something bad happens. And the main characters are going to have to figure out how to go on and save the day anyway. Uh, yeah, Milo says, like Frozen 2. Yeah, you're right. I have a uh, almost four-year-old daughter, so I've seen Frozen 2 many times at this point. <laughs> and you're right. At Towards the end of Frozen 2, there's definitely an all is lost moment. Uh, for each of the main characters, there's an all is lost moment. For Anna and for Elsa, it seems like things are really bad. It seems like they've had some big failures. It seems like some maybe some characters have possibly passed away or died, and the characters are going to have to figure out how to overcome that. Um, for my next slide here, because again, I'm a big Marvel fan, uh, we're going to talk about the Avengers in just a second. But in the first Avengers movie, um, everything starts to fall apart towards the end. The whole team that had started to come together, they just fall apart as a team. A couple people get lost. They're literally fighting each other. Uh, the bad guy, Loki, seems like he's kind of destroyed the team before they could ever even come together as a team. But they figure out how to overcome that. They kind of put aside their differences and they join together. And then we have the final conflict. This is where the whole original Avengers team, this is back in 2012. So this was uh, eight years ago for some of you uh, guys. You might, maybe you haven't seen this one. I recommend go back, watch all the Marvel movies. They're great. <laughs> but 
This is after the team kind of fell apart. They put themselves back together again. Even though all was lost just a little bit ago, this is the part of the story or the movie where the team figures out or the main character figures out how to bring things back together. They're going to go on and try to save the day anyway. And in like a superhero movie or an adventure movie, this is where the good guy or the good guys will probably fight the big villain of the movie. They'll have the big final battle. Uh, in a different kind of movie that doesn't have to do with superheroes, this might be the big confrontation between the main character uh, and maybe you know whoever was causing problems for them in their life. Even with a, a small example, like we talked about, if your whole story is a kid going to a new school and trying to like fit in or like figure out how to live in this new town and this new school, maybe the final conflict was that there was like a bully who was like teasing them the whole story. And the final conflict is that they figure out how to stand up to that person and get them to stop bullying them. Uh, small story or giant story, after your all is lost moment, you build back up to the big final uh, confrontation. And it's really satisfying for a reader or a viewer to see the character or the main characters kind of take everything that they've learned, everything that they have grown and all the new skills, all the new uh, abilities they have, they put them all together at the end and they manage to save the day just in the nick of time. I think you guys are thinking of some examples because I'm seeing lots of uh, things popping up in the Q&A box. Let's see what examples we're thinking of here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> some of the viewers are talking about other examples from uh, Avengers movies and Marvel movies. Yeah, pretty much every Marvel movie, they have an all is lost moment and then the characters come back and they have their big final confrontation, their big final battle with the bad guys. Um, Isis says that this happens in the Land of Stories too. I haven't read the Land of Stories books yet, but I believe you, there's probably the big final confrontation at the end of each one of those books. <laughs> Fallon is saying, oh, this is when the aliens come to New York. Yes, you're right. That's, it's the big final scene of the first Avengers movie. Um, yeah, now one, one, uh, one viewer, uh, I'm not going to spoil which movie they're talking about, but one viewer just pointed out in the Q and a box, they named a movie where the, uh, the good guy or the good guys actually lose at the end. And that's a really good example. I'm not going to mention it here cause it's a bit of a spoiler, but at the beginning, remember when we talked about, um, these are suggestions and some stories won't follow all of these rules or they won't follow all these suggestions. Yes, that viewer, you made a great example of a story where it kind of was very surprising for a lot of people that watched this particular movie because everything built up to the moment where you think that the good guy or the good guys are gonna win and they actually lose. And it was shocking when this happens in the movie because we as viewers and we as readers are so used to the good guys winning at the end that when they didn't, it was a big surprise. So that particular movie and story still did very well and people still loved it um, because it was well-made, the story was well-written, um, but it really played around with this journey that we're talking about. And it also benefited from that the story often goes on. You might write another story or another book or a sequel to a movie where the good guy or the heroes get another chance. Uh, this happens in several of the Harry Potter books. I can think of two of the Harry Potter books and movies that have a big loss at the end. And that big loss doesn't get uh, fixed totally in that story. But the story goes on in you know, another book after it. So it's okay in your story not to follow all of these suggestions. But a lot of stories do. And when you're starting out and you're kind of practicing and getting better at creative writing, you can follow these steps to kind of give you an outline to follow. This can kind of be a structure, like you're building uh, your, your story, like you're building a house. This is kind of the, all the, all the, the, 
you know, the frame, all the first wood you put up that you're then gonna build your house around. Okay, so the last part uh, is after the final conflict, when the good guy or the good guys usually win, there is the journey home. And this is the last part we're gonna talk about. After the good guys win and save the day, uh, there's usually a little last part of the story where you kind of return to normal again. At the end of that Avengers movie, after the good guys defeat the bad guy, they kind of go their separate ways. There's a little quieter part of the movie where the people of New York are saying, thank you for saving us. Um, they're trying to decide what to do with the bad guy and are they gonna join up and be a super team still in the future or not? Um, that's the journey home. Here, this picture you know, from Harry Potter, the year is over. Harry Potter has learned a lot of stuff. He's overcome uh, uh, the villain, but he has to go back. He has to go back home. He has to go back to his family that he doesn't particularly love living with them, but he has to go home for the summer. Um, things need to kind of return to a normal state again, to some degree at the end of a story, because often you might want to tell another story um, or you need to, you know, you don't have the, uh, the story end just as like the, the big bad guys are overcome. You kind of need a bit of a settling down or sort of a, a, a cooling off from the big exciting thing that just happened. So here, the end of the first Harry Potter, Harry is going back home, he's waving goodbye, but there's definitely the sense or the communication there that he's going to come back. There's going to be more stories to tell. Uh, in lots of Avengers movies and Marvel movies, they'll even do this by putting little extra scenes in the credits at the end to kind of give you that exciting like, okay, things have settled down, but they're going to get exciting again. Um, in this picture here, I really like, there's, there's various ways to show this, but I like that this one is a circle because the story begins here with a normal world. It, there's the call to action, uh, leaving home or crossing the threshold. There's the mentor teaching the lead character. There's challenges, there's temptation. There's the dark moment or the all is lost. There's the final conflict. And then the journey home. And that kind of takes us back to the normal world of the main character. This is where uh, book two of your book series has to kind of start off in a normal state again for the new story to start. This is where at the end of your superhero story, the character, things won't be exactly the same as they were at the beginning, but there's going to be a new normal. After in the first Spider-Man movie, uh, after uh, Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man, he gets bit by a spider, he goes on this adventure. By the end of it, Spider-Man's normal world will be his just day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, saving people, uh, stopping bank robberies, etc. Kind of a normal, not super dangerous, normal world for uh, Spider-Man. It's just his normal superheroing. Uh, but then the next Spider-Man story, that normal world, he'll have a new call to action. There will be a new threshold to cross. Uh, your, your new story will start this whole cycle over again, but kind of on a different level. Uh, with Harry Potter, he's had his first whole year at school. He has to go back home to the Dursleys for the summer. But then the next book starts with, he's in the normal world of the Dursleys. Again, that's the family that he lives with, uh, his aunt and uncle. But he, he has to, he gets a new call to action. If you've read the second Harry Potter book, you know that a new thing kind of comes up and there's a new exciting thing that's starting off his next year of school. So stories can kind of go in circles and you can use that uh, to create your own stories. All right, so we're almost out of time. Um, I'm just looking here to see if you guys have had a few more ideas. <laughs> um, some people are trying to guess what movie I was talking about where the bad guys lose at the end, but I'm not gonna tell you right now because if you haven't seen it, I don't wanna spoil the end. <laughs> Um, yeah, one person uh, really likes Lord of the Rings. They're saying that Lord of the Rings follows this hero's journey. You're right. 
Lord of the Rings follows like the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings follows this hero's journey really well. There is definitely uh, a call to action. There's learning, there's like mentors, there's, uh, you know, an all is lost moment in these stories. But then the characters have to keep on going to the final battle. So great example. Uh, let's see, uh, one person says, what was the first stage of the story? I can, I'll put it up on the screen as we end here so we can look one more time. Um, yeah, and lots of people are bringing up other, other movies and other stories. You guys are doing great. Uh, the more you think about the movies and, that you've watched and the stories that you've read, you'll think of ways that you've seen this in stories. Uh, you'll probably also be able to think of examples where this doesn't happen so much. Um, if you ever saw the old Spider-Man movies, um, Spider-Man has some mentors, but he doesn't really have a teacher in the original, original Spider-Man movies. He doesn't really have anybody teaching him how to be Spider-Man. He has to figure it out himself. So that's an example of a movie that doesn't have a strong mentor. Um, you'll probably be able to think of stories that don't really have a all is lost moment or a dark moment. Some stories, the characters just kind of cruise right on to the final confrontation and win, and that's okay too. So here's one more time before we end off there, and I'll just say the really simple version. There's the normal world of your main character. Something big happens to change that. Uh, the character has to decide to actually leave and go on this adventure. They have to start learning new abilities, gaining new skills. They're going to overcome challenges. They're going to experience challenges and have to overcome them. This whole chunk here might even repeat. There might be, you know, they, they learn something new. They have to encounter a challenge. Then they learn something else and they have another challenge. They encounter temptations. They learn something new. This whole part of act two might have repeat this cycle more than once, but there will usually be a big all is lost moment. And then there's the final conflict, the final big battle, whether that's in a drama movie that might just be a conversation, but in a superhero movie, you might be fighting a giant robot. <laughs> After that final conflict, there's a return home. There's a journey back to the normal or a new normal so that the next story can start. So uh, if you want to learn more about this, you can Google this term, the hero's journey. You'll find a lot of resources talking about it. Just try to find ones that aren't too complicated because some people that like to talk about this subject will get very complicated. Try to find yourself a nice simple version and study more about it. Thank you guys for participating today. I loved reading all your examples. You did a great job. Uh, in our next creative writing seminar, we're going to talk more about characters what makes really great characters that your readers will want to read about. Today was all about the journey. Next time it's about the person going on the journey. So I hope to see you all there and I'll, I'll see you next time.